Hello and good morning to Good Morning Vibrations, a format of the digital TV channel of the German speaking issue of Forbes. My name is Andrea Glesemann, I'm senior editor, and I'm happy to start the day with you. Under the theme, the morning makes the day, diversity makes the difference. In this format, I meet a lot of different personalities, talk with them about their career, what makes them successful, and what we can learn from them. So today, it's absolutely a pleasure to welcome Boris Payar as my guest today. He studied engineering and applied mathematics at Ecole Centrale Paris, and then worked in the fields of investment banking. After three years, he decided to quit his job and to work on several tech projects. And in 2013, together with Romain Payat and Sebastien Sonnier, he launched Le Wagon. Le Wagon teaches creative people how to code. And today, it's the world's first ranked coding bootcamp. So, hello and welcome. It's a pleasure having you here today. Hi, Andrea. It's a pleasure to be there with you. So before we deep dive into the world of coding and tech, let's start with a more general question. There's the common opinion that successful people have a certain morning routine, and that's why I would like to ask you if you have one. Yeah, so actually I have kind of a routine, uh, um, but it's a bit special because like, uh, as you know, we are in 38 campuses around the world. And we work remotely with the global team. So we have campus teams working locally, but the global team is working a bit uh, remotely. And we have this chance to be able to work in lots of uh, amazing campus ar around the world. So I end up working a bit from Paris, a bit from London, a bit from Berlin, even if in this COVID uh, times it's uh, a bit difficult to travel. So basically my routine changed a bit. Uh, and my habit, I have habits by country, basically. But generally speaking, uh, uh, my days are very intense, so sometimes I skip lunch or I have a very short lunch. So I like really to take the time to start my day smoothly. So generally, I wake up at 7.30 and then I will really take time to have breakfast without any disruption, like any, I don't even like read the news, just uh, keep like uh, starting the, the, the day like that. So even so I cook my breakfast or go to places I like in London or Berlin, and that's the way I like to, to start uh, my day without any raw related uh, things in my mind. And then I walk to my office or I take the bike to, again, a bit, a bit like uh, keeping my mind uh, clear. And when I arrive, I usually take 30 minutes to get the inbox zero, as many people do. Like when you have lots of email, you, you need to clear that uh, uh, in the morning. And, uh, and I try not to have any business meetings or anything in the morning to focus on important matters and keeping all the meetings, human things in the afternoon where my mind is, uh, is more like uh, into it, basically. Fine. So, and as I mentioned, uh, you studied engineering and applied mathematics, then you worked on several tech pro projects, and then you launched Le Wagon. So what makes you passionate about tech and coding? Yeah, so I'm, in this sense, I discovered that a bit late, lately compared to my uh, technical co-founder, for instance, who uh, um, like, ha has been working on a computer since maybe like six years old and was really passionate that from childhood. And then he, he did polytechnic and but keep like doing a computer science and then work for Google. So he, he really is someone who was passionate like since very, very uh, early age. Was on my case, it's a bit a different uh, journey because I did Central Paris, so I studied I did a bit of coding in my school, but I, I really hated it. I didn't like my programming courses. And so because I didn't have like any real passion and I was not that bad at mathematics, I ended up working in, a, in financial markets as a bit like all the engineers at the time. But it was not really something I, I was uh, uh, enjoying. So with my friends, I, I learned myself to code alone by developing web application during the weekend. And when I did that, that's really where I understood that coding was really like something the most amazing thing I've uh, you know, ever learned because it's about building a software that will be used by people and that was not at all the way it was taught uh, in my engineering school, where it was all about theory and we never built anything that was you know, used in the real world. So I think that's where I had this uh, kind of switch and I say, yeah, that's what I want to do and, and that's what I want to teach people uh, in a new way, basically. So what led you to the final decision to launch uh, Le Wagon? Well, it's a, it's a bit this process when I, I was still working in the bank and uh, building this web application, learning by myself. I, I mean, I always li like to teach. Uh, I think that's uh, whatever I do in the future, I will remain in education. That's really where I, I, I enjoy and I feel really uh, committed. Um, and even in the bank, 
I was the guy that was sent to uh, explain, uh, uh, I don't know, like a probability model or a mathematical model to operational teams so that they can understand why it was designed this way. So I always uh, liked and was a private tutor in mathematics. And so I guess for me, uh, switching, like launching a school was kind of something I had in, in me like from, from a long, like for a long time. It's just like I needed uh, this, uh, this uh, discovery of coding and that like made me decide to quit the bank and launch the school in 2013. And what's your overall vision with the company and how has it developed over the past years? Yeah, so the, the real, the, the objective, uh, so as a school, uh, we want to be like the, you know, the, the most impactful global player in coding boot camps. So we started with web development um, six years ago, and now we have a data science boot camp as well to train data scientists in two months or in uh, six months in, in a part-time format. Um, so for now, we'll, we'll keep these two formats because for us, like, uh, it's not just developers or data scientists, and I think we can discuss about that later. It's more like all the jobs around building softwares and all the jobs around data. And, and there are lots of them. It's not just uh, software developers or da data scientists. And the, the people who join us in our boot camps, some of them do that to be freelancers. Some of them do that to launch their project uh, by themselves as entrepreneurs. And some of them uh, like do that to be managers, but technical managers. So, so not all of them I mean, a majority uh, uh, of people do boot camps to find technical positions as developers or data scientists, but also a lot of people will do that uh, for other kind of jobs or for working uh, in a freelance position or launching a project as an entrepreneur. So yeah, to answer shortly, yeah, we want to be recognized as the global brand uh, with impactful and, and you know, meaningful uh, uh, trainings, in immersive trainings uh, on, on technical topics. And, and what uh, were the, the biggest challenges in establishing the company or, or whether is it how to build a company that scales? Yeah, I think it's, uh, I, mean, I think we haven't really scaled, uh, right? I mean, we are, we are still quite small if you, if you look at the number of graduation, which is one KPI we can look at as a, as a school. Uh, I mean, in 2019, we, we graduated uh, about 2,500 uh, students, which is like a lot, but uh, if you compare that, I don't know, to... Uh, to a college in the US, well, it's in some very small compared to the number of grads you can have in a, in a big school in the UK or in the US. So we, are, we still have a long a way to go to really scale. What we've managed to do is scale uh, in terms of location, which, which I think we are the only one to have achieved that because um, a boot camp, uh, we can discuss about the difference with a traditional school, but uh, it's very intense, like it's 400 hours of coding and practicing. So it's hard for the students, but it's hard and in the good sense because they, they will like struggle, but they will learn very, at a very fast pace. But it's also very hard for the teachers because you need to give so much energy into a teaching day. And so this is the challenge for scaling. And most boot camps, what they do is they open one campus and try to maximize the size of the campus. And maybe at the end, after five years, they will have two or three big campuses with, you know, like as, as a normal school would do, uh, not, uh, not going in too many. And we took a bit different approach. We stayed very focused on one very good bootcamp on web development during five years. And before moving to data science, we really took the time to really uh, like nail the model. And we also put in place a model that was sustainable for teachers, where it was based on a, free, on a community of freelance teachers. And we don't have, for instance, job offers for instructors. We are the only bootcamp that doesn't post job offers because we rely on an internal community of a bit more than 1,000 teachers that we've created ourselves. So I think we were creating in this model of reinventing a bit uh, like the human size of teaching and how we, uh, we build this community of teachers. And we sustain this with uh, tools. So we have a team of 20 developers. We build some some tools for us that help us scale in a different location. So I think it's in this sense that, and now the, the idea is to make every campus grow uh, like as big as Paris or London or Berlin, which are our biggest campuses. So let's talk a little bit more about the difference uh, between universities and your coding bootcamp. So why should I, as a person, um, take part in your bootcamp? Yeah, I, I think I, I would be, I, I, I won't lie and I won't say like bootcamp are going to replace totally. Uh, we need university, we need schools, and we, we need uh, uh, people who take the time to train engineers or to teach mathematics. Or, so we are not going to replace that. It's just, uh, and, and bootcamps were created at first 
uh, because young, young uh, graduates from uh, schools or from university didn't have the, the right skills to be bringing value to a company. So it was kind of, there, there was uh, some, some part missing between graduation and starting your first job, uh, especially in a technical role. That's why the, that the bootcamp appeared and, and started to build like very intensive and efficient uh, short training to, to fill this gap. So I think it's, a, it's bootcamp are a, compl a nice complement to uh, higher education, like traditional higher education. And if you look at our graduates, most of our graduates are young graduates or, I mean, most of our students that are young graduates from schools or young professionals. So there is no real overlap. We have some students who are 18 years old and we have more and more of them. So I, I think that bootcamps are kind of eating the cake. I mean, they're not going to replace totally, but most likely the university will realize that they don't know how to do this kind of training and they will start to do more and more partnership. Like the way there was maybe, uh, there are lots of business schools who partner with engineering schools to create new master in data analytics or things like that. I think in the same sense, uh, university and college will understand that they are not designed to do this kind of training that needs a lot of iteration and they don't have, they have a legacy that prevents them from going there and they really need to make an alliance with uh, boot camps, uh, but they still have a lot of assets, brands, alumni networks. So, well, I think that they, 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 they won't like disappear overnight. Uh, it just, yeah, it's true that boot camps are taking a more and more important part because as well, um, we switch the paradigm from a world where you could learn something for three, year, for three years and then start your career. But now it doesn't work this way. You don't need that big of an initial training, but you need a lot more of, uh, of short and efficient lifelong learnings. And that's, that's a very big shift in education. So how advanced would my skills be after the boot camp? So depending on what you do. Uh, so if you, if you go to our web development boot camp, basically you will uh, know how to, to code uh, in a programming language, I mean, in different programming language, and you will know how to build an, a web application from the database to the, to the interface with a nice design. Uh, so in this sense, you will be a full stack developer, which means you will know how to develop a, a, like an application uh, from like on all the layers from the database to the interface. And with that, either you want to really find a job as a developer or you want to launch your own uh, project or you want to work as a freelancer or you don't want to pursue a career, a tech career, but more move to a technical manager role such as product manager where you will really work with developers. So it's very important that you understand exactly how it works or developer are working with which tools but then you will step back progressively from really the technical uh, topics. So that's for web development. And for data science, I think it's a bit the same. Either so you will know how to uh, clean a data set, analyze it, make a bit of decision based on that, visualize data, and then apply some machine learning models and put these models uh, online so that they be, can be used. Uh, and depending on, the, on your, I, I, would, I would say, like skills and personality, either you will go to an expert role like data analyst or data scientist, or you will move to a data management role or an entrepreneur journey if it's what you want to do. So yeah, I think it's more like this kind of uh, path that you will have. And if I got it right, your um, boot camps are based on an application system. So how do you choose the participants for the, the boot camps? Yeah, so um, you just need to apply. So you just need to select your city because we are in 38 cities and, and uh, uh, with a lot, with all the big uh, capital in Europe. So you need to go on the, the website, lebagon.com, choose your city. Then you choose your program, web development, data science, full time if you, if you, can't, uh, if you can't take two months or part time if you, if you are working and cannot do that for uh, uh, two months uh, full time. And then the process is you have an interview with an admission manager. And in the interview, we will validate, so it can be by Zoom, and we validate your human skills, like your soft skills. And for data science, we validate also that you have a bit of prerequisite skills in mathematics and programming. Because this program requires a bit more, whereas the web development uh, bootcamp is more beginner friendly. That's the normal uh, process. And then we give you some preparation work to be ready uh, for, the, for the, the first day of the bootcamp. And especially in Germany, it's interesting because, uh, I mean, we've been certified by the job agency. And now that anyone in Germany who is registered in Germany and who is unemployed or, or soon to be unemployed can basically uh, ask for an education voucher and do our bootcamp for free. 
that that's something this year in germany we've trained like 130 people like unemployed people uh and help them find jobs so i think it's uh something we are very proud of also and uh I, th I think for me, Germany is fantastic because that's a country where it really works. I, I won't criticize France, but France is very complex in the sense that you can get some part of the, as a school. You need to develop a big team of, and, and you want to spend time helping your students get trained and find jobs and, and not you know, develop like a, a huge machine of uh, administrative machine. And the system, I think, with Education Butcher is, is, uh, is great uh, and giving a chance to a lot more people in, in Germany. Yeah, yeah. So let's uh, step a little bit back and to have a more general look on, on the future of workforce. So how important will coding skills be in future and how will the workforce look like in future or the skills of the workforce? Yeah, uh, I think everyone knows that uh, like job, existing jobs are being transformed. So you don't do digital marketing the way you, was do, yeah, you were doing that like uh, uh, back in the day. Or, so all jobs are being impacted by, by technology which doesn't mean that everyone should uh, be a, a developer. Uh, but this means that uh, everyone should have like a basic skills in like basic knowledge uh, in programming. The way you have a basic knowledge is uh, in design or marketing or finance. So from the expert, of course, who need that because that's what they are working on on, on a daily basis, but also uh, technical managers and even like the senior manage, uh, management of a company needs to understand clearly uh, how it works, uh, because technology is like just uh, uh, as important as any as finance or marketing. Um, so that's I think uh, uh, what I think that everyone should at least have a, have a certain like a knowledge uh, of, of programming. Um, interestingly, it's not just about knowing how to code, but when you learn to code, you like developers. I, this is something I discovered as well because, as I told you, I was not a developer originally. But I discovered also the way they work. So for, for instance, there are people who work asynchronously that really have a, a, a real good organization of working on the project. Because if you work with a team of 20 developers on the same uh, project where there are dozens of files and everyone is coding in the same files, you need to have a discipline and a way of working with modern tools. And, and all these things, it's not just coding, it's methods. And, and it's, uh, you know, like uh, that change a bit your mindset and the way you're working. And I think it's, uh, it's maybe as important uh, as the pure coding skills. All these kind of soft skills or methodological skills uh, that developers are using. And I think it's especially more important in the COVID time where remote, where I think developers are really fine in this environment because they are used to working remotely, asynchronously, and, uh, and all these kind of soft skills and methods that uh, where developers are really advanced into, in, in that because they are working like that for a long time. I think that's also something that's, uh, that's key uh, in the future of work. So thank you, Boris, for your valuable insight. It's what su it was such a pleasure having you here today. And I hope you guys out there had as much as fun as I did. And um, yeah, I wish you all a really nice day. Um, see you soon. Stay healthy, stay in business. Bye. Thank you. Bye.